I'm here at HPE Discover in Las Vegas with Nigel Edwards, and security, of course, is something that, that matters for all forms of computing. Sure. What's new from HP Labs around security? So, uh, we're doing, uh, we're showing three projects here. Uh, all of the research that we do in labs is designed to, intended to, to build on silicon root of trust, which we have in ILO 5. That's what enables us to deliver the, the world's most secure industry standard servers today. Uh, we have similar mechanisms in our HP Aruba switches. So we're building on that, that, that base. So here we have a standard uh, uh, DL360 uh, machine uh, with ILO in, 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 inside it. Uh, and so the first project we're, de we're demonstrating is an intrusion detection monitor. So today ILO, which is our baseboard management controller, is ma responsible for managing the server it is and it makes it ensures that your server boots authorized firmware firmware has been signed by HPE so that's great but what we've done with I with our prototype is to extend that so that ILO is then monitoring the running server the, the operating system uh, and and why that is significant, is significant is malware that gets into the operating system of the, of the main processor is not able to disable the ILO monitor. So we have a, ILO is isolated from the main processor. So ILO is sitting there like, if you like, like a spy satellite observing the main processor. And in, in this particular prototype, we're monitoring the kernel, looking for drivers being inserted into the kernel, which is the most advanced, stealthy kind of malware. This is the particular concern of our customers, advanced persistent threats, where the attacker wants to get a long-term backdoor to steal their data. And so what we're doing with, with is extending the reach of ILO to detect that kind of attack. So how, how are you doing that? Like, what, what, what's the uh, so, mechanism that... So the that mechanism... The, the, the specific mechanism is we have a we go through a measured or secure boot. We know with ILO 5 silicon rooted trust that you come up you, 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 you're going to come up in a known good state. So at that point, early on in the boot cycle, we have a driver which fingerprints the kernel. So uh, and that reports that information back to the ILO processor, and thereafter. Uh, ILO is then knows what regions of memory should not be changing, so it knows what the executable kernel, what what the, where the executable kernel code is. It knows that shouldn't change. It knows where the kernel read-only data is. It knows that shouldn't change. It knows where the drivers are, and it knows that they shouldn't change. And there should be no more drivers in, 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 uh, inserted into the kernel. It knows what, and it's monitoring the system call table as well to make sure the system call table isn't hooked. That's, that's pretty cool. So you mentioned that there were three projects, three projects happening yeah, here. What, yeah. what other projects so are The second project we have is, uh, is called the Verification Framework. So uh, this is uh, designed to uh, basically monitor the security posture of your systems at scale. So we have, uh, uh, we're using trusted platform modules. The so trusted platform modules are industry standard secure microcontrollers. And uh, they were basically been around now and conceived actually almost 20 years ago. Uh, and, and they're designed to measure uh, 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 systems securely in a tamper resistant way. The chip itself is tamper resistant. So this is, this we ship as an option with our servers. So this enables us to measure the state of the server. And this is shipping now in, in um, servers? So, so TPMs are available now as an option. Now what we've, we have, uh, uh, we have a, a research prototype showing how we can use those TPMs to measure the state of the system. So why is this important? So ILO will ensure that your system loads known good firmware. It's firmware that's been signed by HPE. Let's say you've got a thousand servers some of our customers have more than that. Yeah. And you want to push out a patch, like this happened recently with Spectre Meltdown. Our customers needed to push out patch. So you have some kind of patch management system pushes out the patch. What this will tell you is it will verify that patch has been successfully applied to all your systems. It will identify the problem children to where the patch hasn't been applied. It goes further than that though. We, we can uh, also use it to detect whether a 
a, a PCI card has been changed. So perhaps somebody's gone into the data center and removed a PCI card or inserted a new PCI card into your server. Um, we can also uh, use it, we also use it to protect the boot configuration. So maybe somebody's accidentally or deliberately d disabled secure boot and we can detect that. So those are the, the, the server use cases. Uh, we'll also ha uh, do the same kind of thing for switches as well. And actually with the switches, uh, really, it's really important to have the right configuration, all right? So, uh, and that they're running the right scripts. So we also verify that not only your, your switch is running the, 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 the expected version of firmware, but it's the right, it's the right, the correct configuration. Otherwise, who knows what could be going, going wrong? You know, attacker may have got a, a, a faulty configuration on there and, 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 and subverted your security for you. So that's, that's called the, the verification framework. That's the second of our, of our three projects. And the third one is? So the third one is uh, what we component authentication. So we view, and so this, if you like, is driving security even deeper into the system, uh, to, right down to the component level. We view every component as a potential attack vector. So when you say component, you mean like a, a PCI card? A or PCI a... card, like one of these, a fan, a power supply, a processor, uh, a, a, the humble dim. So this this is a component as well. And um, pe uh, uh, root kits have been demonstrated for NICs and storage controllers, which can completely completely subvert your security. Fans and power supplies run uh, firmware. If if you have a counterfeit fan or the firmware is compromised, that can cause overheating or even fires. So it's really important that you can authenticate that the components are legitimate uh, and that the, uh, the firmware they're running is correct. So we're working with our industry partners and across the industry to establish a standard mechanism for authenticating components. So May the 31st, uh, the, the, the DMTF published uh, the result of this work as a draft standard uh, called the Security Protocol and Data Model. So this is a standard set of data objects which can be exchanged across, it was designed to be exchanged across any fabric you have within a server or a switch. So I2C, I3C, PCI, CXL, Gen Z. Um, so these data objects enable you to authenticate a component like this. So the idea is that at manufacturing time, uh, the manufacturer will issue a certificate to this component. The component will be able to authenticate a public-private key pair. Now that might sound like a burden, but there are 10 cent chips out there today that can authenticate public-private key pairs. So it's not adding a huge cost, particularly at volume. So that means that when the system boots up, in our case, ILO, will be able to uh, get, via, get to the DIMMs via I2C and authenticate that you've got legitimate memory modules. It will be able to get to uh, your PCI devices and authenticate them. Furthermore, it will measure the firmware. So the, the standard is these, uh, allows you to measure the firmware in a secure way. So you'll know that these, these devices are not only authentic, but they also have the correct version of uh, a firmware that you expect. So nobody's inserted a rootkit in your, your PCI device or into your storage controller. So that's, that's really important, uh, not only for devices in the data center, but particularly devices at the edge, right? So um, uh, imagine a, a, a server in a remote office or one of our edge line servers where, where they're much more easily accessible to hostile actors. Uh, supposing uh, they insert something in, into that chassis. Well, with component authentication, we'll detect that. When, when the thing boots, ILO will get a fully authenticated inventory of everything that's in the chassis. And we can do that at rack scale. So the verification framework that I talked about earlier on is designed to give a dashboard across thousands of servers. So at the moment, that's at a very coarse grain. In the future, we'll be able to actually tell you every single device, every single pluggable device inside the chassis of each one of your servers or switches is legitimate. It's not a question of stopping the customer buying off the shelf devices. We just want the customer to know that they're the devices they expect to have in their servers and they're not, their security has not been uh, tampered with. So we're going further uh, with this too. So our intent is to progress this standard to enable uh, key exchange, to enable authenticated and encrypted communication over fabrics such as PCI, 
Express over CXL and Gen Z so that uh, we'll be able to have fully authenticated, fully encrypted communication. So that's important, again, for edge appliances yeah. uh, because it stops people inserting, doing ch chip clip attacks. You insert a chip uh, clip onto your PCI uh, bus, you're not going to see any data that's any of any use to you if everything's authenticated and encrypted over that. When we get to fully composable infrastructures where we just have racks of pluggable components, uh, it's going to be really easy to insert devices into uh, those racks. So at that point you want to know, you want to detect anything that's active, component authentication will do that. Um, if you have an authenticated and encrypted communication flowing over the fabrics that connect to all those components, a passive device won't be able to get any useful data either. That's, that's pretty wild. Thanks. All right, well, thanks, Nigel. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure talking to you, Jake.